Can hear everybody scream? Just got paid the debt. Got me a pocket full of change. So we just us three. Horan, he's playing the bago, I'm playing the accordion, my nephew Ruben playing the bass, and we're just playing around, getting music together, and, and my dad would hear us and think, you know. I got my back. Daddy, there's something going on. <laughs> so my nephew at the time made a, uh, started learning the drums. Mm -hmm. So he started learning the drums at the same time. So my dad said, okay, my dad played the bajo, David DeAndre played the bass, I was learning the accordion slowly, my nephew Ruben played the drums. So we were forming a little band. About what house. year was it? Seventy eight. That was had to be seventy nine. Yeah, because if you uh, were if you were thirteen, fourteen, plus you were sixty five, yeah. that's like seventy eight, bro. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, seventy eight, seventy nine, hitting man, into the eighties, man. <laughs> Getting really close. Isn't it crazy, man? How oh, you know? I mean, we look back at uh, our careers, our time flies. and there's so many things that we don't really put attention to that have happened in the past, and. We realize, wow, you know. And we've seen a lot back then. Yeah. You know, back then, it's like now, you know, like I hear, uh, you can hear a car backfire. And I'm like, you know, I'll jump or I'll move. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes my wife says, you know, you do that a lot or anything. You know, I wasn't even in war, you know, to say like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, yeah, uh, flashbacks and stuff like that. What it was is every time I played in bars back then, well, shoot, man, there was always gunshots. Yeah, there was always knives, yeah, yeah. Just killings and shootings. Yeah. And when that happened at the time when I was small, my mom would come over, like, you know, and I thought she was going to get me off the drums and protect me. No, she'd be standing in front of the drums because the owner would say, keep playing, keep playing. So here I am. And, yeah. Ah, you got, and you're like, yeah. you know, you'd keep playing. I would then. imagine it would cause some sort of PTSD, <laughs> man. I mean, post-traumatic stress disorder where uh, at a young age being in that uh, in that culture, and uh and you know i could really say now i understand you know, yeah well you know what, it, our, what our troops go through and stuff like yeah that. i mean not realizing it, it. well there's different i mean we just had a guy uh here that had a heart attack and he had to take uh, counseling for post-traumatic stress disorder because of that but whenever you're a certain age and you get put through some certain situations and i would imagine you know being in the bars in houston at the age of 12 13 playing uh in a band uh, could uh, you know if there yeah you see a lot bro yeah. you grow up fast so you obviously grew up fast bro I seen a lot of people getting killed getting stabbed yeah. I mean a lot of older, I mean I saw you're right you know I did but back then you're young and the laws the yeah. laws were different and yeah well you, you know, know I mean a lot of you know there's been a lot of studies now and all that stuff so that you know there's certain things that happen that can have an effect. Uh, on you without you even it, yeah. know it yeah without realizing it so then you were in the bars you were playing and and so when you're, you're david uh, following us and ruben my nephew following yeah. us and we're all forming and our little dad, family band your dad, dad the yeah. sex, so. and he heard you all performing and then what did you say so well at that moment we were learning i was learning i was listening to ooh, the relampagos mm -hmm. Ramon. i was listening to juan Villarreal. yeah Los cachorros. Uh, yeah, and then I would realize, I didn't realize, but I was listening to Tony La Rosa, mm -hmm. Ruben Naranjo. Um, the I Pioneers. Yeah, um, Ruben Bella, you know, their style. Of and music. they all had they their own different. unique style. They had their signature. Yeah, signature. They did. Yeah. You could distinguish, back back then, you could distinguish any band if they came out on the radio. Pretty mm -hmm. much, you yeah. know that. You know who that was. And, and with the beginning notes. Right? <laughs> no I mean, kidding. Like, Name okay, that tune. Yeah, you know? right away. As soon as the song starts, they don't even have to start singing. You heard the sound of the accordion, the the the, the tempo, and right away you knew who that was, man. Exactly. They all had their signature. Exactly, and, and at the same time we we didn't sing, so my dad had uh, one of our neighbors. My dad rented houses, you know, and he had, and a couple of the guys that lived there were uh, were a lot of workers. Well, one of them, I guess, my dad heard them singing, you know, outside mm -hmm. cutting the grass, whatever yeah. he was doing, and he had asked him to join us, whatever, sing a couple of songs, because my dad I remember I remember my dad telling me. Well, you need you guys need to learn how to sing Spanish and this and that. I said, Well, Dad, you never taught us Spanish because every time you talked about us, I bet you you were talking in Spanish, so we wouldn't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So now you want us just to start singing, you know? <laughs> we didn't. We didn't speak Spanish hardly at home. Sí, so. no, pues allá en Houston y está pues hablando en las escuelas y todo yeah, eso, yeah. Exactly. And back then it was a lot harder, you know. We spoke mm -hmm. Spanish in, in school and this and that, was yeah. kind of made fun of you. And yeah. It was pretty. It's pretty hard. So we didn't sing much Spanish, but. As we had, he had, he joined us for a while and started singing. He would sing, he would teach us 
like, oh, this song is a corrido, this song is a ranchera, uh, sing a cumbia, and stuff. He was showing us little by little. He was educating you guys. He, he was, but, and, yeah. and not realizing that he was educating some guys who knew what the future was going to be like for us, you yeah. know? And I wonder if I would ever see him again today, if he's still around or whatever, mm -hmm. to thank him. You know, thank people like him. I try to remember as many people as I can to thank them because, you know, we sometimes forget even to say thank you to the man upstairs. You well, know? you know, well, life, you know, life can do that to us. Yeah, you know? we're in a rush today. Too many things going on, man. Too Fast, many things. You know? and, and so all, these all this time that's going on, we're forming a little band here. And my another cousin, Raymond DeAnda, mm -hmm. that's where we became family. Well, he started hanging out with us. He was always, oh, he wanted to be a roadie back then, but we didn't know about roadies, but mm -hmm. he wanted to help out setting up. So he started coming to the house a lot. We were practicing at the house a lot, a lot of songs, and before you know it, we were just doing the music now. Mm -hmm. And we were all family. So my dad played a few songs, and then David played the bajo. Mm -hmm. And then my cousin Raymond played the bass, Ruben was playing the drums. So before you know it, my mm -hmm. mom said, ah, Let's try to give the band a name, you know, for us. So we were called Las Estrellas de Houston. Orale. That was our first name. <laughs> That's a good trivia question, Rasa, right there. <laughs> that was our first name my mom, they gave us that. So Las Estrellas de Houston, that's what we were called. And we were all kids. So we were learning to sing one or two, three or four songs. Now, little by little, me and David, trying to learn harmony. And I remember when I was 14, and, and, and trying to sing and play the accordion, I couldn't do it. I was, you know, I was learning and... And David singing and playing the bajo was different, and you know it's just we wanted to, you know, to to be. We were clowning around at home, not realizing that we were making something out of out of fun. We were learning music, not knowing if it was going to be a career or not. Mm -hmm. we were just doing it for the fun of it and thinking we're having fun. Yeah. But my my mom and seriously thought, no, let's. She was looking make a from the out. <laughs> she was looking from the outside in. I said the tiempo. Que yo guardo un sentimiento. Yeah, we did a lot of house parties and uh -huh. we started learning about singing and cumbias and a couple of rancheras and stuff. And That's where you honed your craft. We still had this man joining us because we couldn't sing that many songs. So he would still sing with us. Yeah. He would help us out. He was in Corrido. We were learning all these songs, learning the music. And, and before you know it, we went to San Antonio to the studio. It was in a garage, and I didn't know that, that we were gonna, what we were going to record or something. So my mom and dad they said, "Well, El, um, El Chubasco was one. Uh -huh. Carlos uh, y José. Uh huh. And um, Al Cortaro en la Gardenia. Oh, really? Otra and, classic. Uh, <coughs> el, uh, el, I was trying to remember all the names. Um, Golly. That studio, it, like, how did your mom find out about that I studio? I think it was my dad, who was a friend of my dad's, and they were talking about doing, why don't you record these, ki won't you, these kids, why don't you record them? Mm -hmm. So when we went into the studio, we were setting up in the office, and I didn't know that my, my dad and, and, the, and the guy that was going to record us, but they were talking and talking, you know, and, and he happened to say, oh, it was, y estos, ¿quién son? And my dad happened to say, oh, pues, he told him, estos son mis chamacos. 